Good evening, family. What a delight to see you on tonight. Uh, glad that uh, you could join us and uh, get online tonight. For those of you who are on YouTube and on Facebook, welcome. Welcome back. No, it's been a while. We've had technical difficulties and been out for a while. We're glad to be back tonight. Listen, why don't you take an opportunity to share with someone uh, this Bible study tonight. Go ahead and tag them, which means put their name in the chat if they're a friend of yours, or go ahead and text them, amen, or call them and say, hey, Passages in the Parlor is on tonight. We're so happy to be back and to have you uh, in with us. Um, let's talk about tonight just a little bit before we pray we've been talking about spiritual gifts and many of you have been asking me for the spiritual gifts inventory so i'm going to give you a website tonight whereby you can go and we're just going to talk uh soberly about spiritual gifts and i want you to join in tonight I want you to talk online I want you to type in what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and also want to, you know, do a recap of what uh, we talked about on Sunday. So many of you had uh, so many beautiful responses to Sunday's message, uh, giving family a second chance. And so I just want to hear from you tonight. Uh, just go ahead, get relaxed, get your coffee, get your tea. Uh, you may be eating dinner even, uh, but whatever you're doing, uh, you may be at work and you're taking your break. Uh, we want you to join in with us tonight and let us know, one, that you're online. So let me see uh, who we have um, tonight. Looks as if uh, we have um, uh, Rosie Powell. Uh, we have Tracy Dalco. Good to see you. Jan Mack, Jay Love, good to see you. Denise Robinson is watching. Sister Rita Adams is watching. Aileen Higgins is watching. Hey, Sister Linda Price, Nicole Azan, God bless you. Great to see you. Hey, Sister Lanita Weir, God bless you. Looks like we have Margie Cephas and Cynthia Montgomery on. Great to have you here. Janice Fountain, Paula Lane, Mary Simon, Kathy Johnson, God bless you. So great to have all of you online tonight. Let's go ahead and pray and um, seek God for God's guidance um, and God's provision for our study tonight. Gracious God, how we love you and thank you and honor you for an opportunity to come to your people tonight, O oh God, to share, O oh God, that which you shared with us we thank you, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit is present with us, O oh God. We thank you now that your love uh, is ever 
with us. Your grace is ever with us. Thank you for these five years, O oh God, of kingdom ministry. Thank you, O oh God, for receiving our praise, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, for coming in and inhabiting, O oh God, uh, our worship. Thank you, O oh God, for being in our preaching and our teaching, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to be a blessing to this community. And so, God, it doth not yet appear what we shall be. And so, God, we're looking with tiptoe anticipation, O oh God, of how you will lead us and guide us into these next few years, O oh God, as we seek, O oh God, to show the world Jesus, the love of Jesus, and the life of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray, and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. One of the things that I want us to be fully aware of, and we've been talking about it uh, for a while now, is that each of us has a gift. Each of us has a gift. Amen. Hey, Tony Triplett. Hey, Jane Smitty. God bless you. Mary Tizano. God bless you. Just calling out those that I see in the chat. God bless all of you. Great to have you tonight. All of us have a gift, and many of you have been saying, I wonder what my gift is. Well, one of the drawbacks or deficits uh, in spiritual gift tests or spiritual gift surveys is that they really don't cover everything. And they really don't cover, especially the arts. Uh, if you are uh, in music, if you love to sing or you love to direct or you play, whether it's an instrument, um, whether um, you are uh, an artist, uh, you paint, uh, you draw. It really doesn't cover those things. And so I want you to be aware that when uh, you take this spiritual gift test, it really, you know, kind of gives you uh, like gifts of administration, apostleship, compassion, discernment, uh, evangelism, exhortation, faith, giving, healing, helping, knowledge, leadership. And so I don't want you to be thrown off by that. I really want you to be able uh, to ask the Holy Spirit, I know what you have. I know you've given me a gift or gifts, uh, but I'm just not sure how to appropriate them. And all gifts, please let me hurry up and say this, all gifts are not necessarily used on Sunday morning. That's right. We have a tendency to limit uh, our giftings or limit the anointing to what we do on Sundays. And the truth of the matter is most of the gifts are not in use on Sundays. Some of the gifts are, but certainly not all of them. And so don't think for a moment that because you're not participating on stage or you're not ushering, you won't find ushering as a part of the spiritual gifts, but you'll find compassion. You'll find uh, hospitality as a part of that. So don't so strictly necessarily align yourself, but I think you may be surprised. And it's an online, amen, it's an online uh, gifting test that allow you to go in, it's free. Uh, and this is just one of many, but I thought it'd be a good one for us to start with. And what I'd like for you to do, uh, not right now, what I'd like for you to be able to do is to take this test, print out the results, uh, and then uh, let's talk about them, what they are. Uh, we'll get together on a Saturday and talk about these gifts, or maybe we'll get together on a Zoom and talk about those gifts. But once you find out what that gift is, I don't want you to be shy about sharing. It's like, oh, no, I'm not going to tell Pastor CJ because then she is going to put me to work. Well, yeah, that's that's all a part of it. But it wouldn't be me putting you to work. It'll be God, right, putting you to work in God's vineyard. Amen. Can we say amen to that? So, hey, Sister Renee Mobley, hey, Lakeisha McIntosh. So I want us then to be able to take a look at one, we all have a gift. And I want you to find out what that is. We're going to be 
inviting others in to help us uh, with discipleship training. And that just means helping us not only talk about the love of Jesus, but to display the love of Jesus. We talk about all the time, people just need to know Jesus. They need to have a relationship with Jesus. Well, what does that relationship really mean? So I want you to capture uh, this website really quickly. I'll leave it up for a moment. Capture that website, write it down, take a picture of it so that after the study is over, you can go online, take the test. Once again, it may not cover um, the arts, right? It may not cover music. It may not cover painting. It may not cover drawing, but it'll also give you some other uh, indicators of things that you may be called to. So you may say, well, I don't see mine on there. Well, I promise you uh, there'll be something in there that you'll see, and then we'll ask the Holy Spirit uh, to then uh, help us discern and define more closely what that is, okay? Please write that down. Uh, Nicole also put that in the chat so that people can go back. Hey, Sister Anita Blake, good to see you. Monica Daniels, great to see you. God bless you tonight. I'm going to leave that up there for just a moment. And for those of you who are just signing in, uh, you've been asking for a spiritual gift test. This is one of many, uh, but it's one that you can take online, get your results back, and then we can talk about them. And you may say, oh, that's not me at all, right? That's not me at all. But the truth of the matter is sometimes uh, we will see things uh, and discount ourselves or will desire a particular office or a particular gifting and said, oh no, God would never allow me to do that. And so I just want you to take the limits off tonight. Can somebody just say, take the limits off? Take the limits off. Hey, Gwendolyn Howard, God bless you. All right. Does everyone have that? And of course, you can always go back and um, watch this again to get this. And if it does not work, let me know. Uh, but you can really go to just giftstest.com. You can go to www.giftstest.com and you should be able to do that. In fact, uh, Nicole, why don't you go to that website right now, make sure it works uh, so that uh, our folks will not be frustrated. I tried it out before uh, some time ago, and then I want you to be able to see it there for yourself. Amen? Amen. All right. All right. Let's go back here. Okay. So I want to read into your hearing tonight. I want to read into your hearing tonight from 1 Corinthians 12. You've, you've heard this before. I really hope what you will do is to really join in, type in tonight, uh, dislodge yourself from whatever it is you're doing if you can, uh, and talk to me tonight through the chat. All right, I'm going to be watching the chat uh, for your commentary. All right for your commentary. And so I'm going to read this piece. I'm going to read verse 4 of 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. It says, There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men are in all people. So we have several things here. And I really want you to drill down on this. I want you to stop thinking that necessarily that what you do at your job is all that you're gifted to do. You may not even like what you do on your job. And this is the time to begin asking the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what is it that 
you have put me on the earth to do. And here's the thing. God will allow you to get paid in your giftedness. Quit allowing people to convince you all oh, that, you know, when you work for the Lord or when you have an assignment for the Lord, uh, it should be free. That's not true. Uh, many persons uh, do great things on behalf of the kingdom. And the bonus is that God not only pays us with grace and with mercy, uh, God also pays us where we can live in houses and drive cars and wear clothes and put food on our table. What kind of God would have us work and not be compensated? We talk about all the time that a workman is worth his or her hire. All right. So if you're in a job that you dislike, this may be a good night to begin petitioning asking, inquiring of the Holy Spirit. Show me. I know what people said that, oh, I can't do this, or maybe I'm too old, or maybe I'm too young, or women don't get a chance to do that, or men don't get a chance to do that. Take the limits off. All that you've seen so far is not all you're capable of doing. Can, can I just get that through to anybody? I don't, I don't see y'all talking to me tonight. Uh, just, just, yeah, come on, come on. Take, take the limits off. What have you been thinking about? Let me just ask some questions, maybe to prompt conversation. What have you been thinking about that you've already convinced yourself is impossible? And I'm going to wait. I'm going to have to put us in Zoom so I can have you guys talk back to me in real time. What have you been thinking about, been longing for, maybe all of your life, maybe all of your adult life, or maybe it first came to you as a child. Where do you think that thought came from? Could it be that the Holy Spirit put that in your heart, in your spirit from the very beginning, and now it's become it's beginning to germinate within you, and you're just thinking, oh, God, I really would love for God to use me like this, but it's just too late, or I've messed up too much, right? Come on, somebody talk to me. Somebody talk to me. Hey, Sister Gertrude Figs, God bless you tonight. Great to see you. Talk to me, people. Talk to me. Let me hear from you. Let me hear from you. Nicole, if I'm not uh, seeing uh, the comments, please put them uh, in the chat. Hey, Jay Jackson, God bless you. Please put them in the chat if I am not seeing it. Can I tell you that when we started five years ago, I would not have thought that we would be where we are right now. And we're still not where we're going to be. There is so much more. We haven't even scratched the surface of what God would have us do. And so I want you, this is our mantra, take the limits off. By his grace, God has allowed us to build. God has allowed us to believe. And now God will allow us to become. That's what those three words are in our theme for this fifth year anniversary. By the grace of God that we have been building, we've been believing and also becoming. Don't you want that to be uh, your testimony uh, that where you are right now uh, doesn't have to be where you are for the next 20 years or the next 30 years. Uh, you may be retired. Uh, you may say, hey, you know what? I'm through. I put in my time. But have you put in all of your time with the kingdom, though? You may have put in all your time with that company. But are you through with the kingdom or better, I should say, is the kingdom through with you? Come on. You guys talk to me tonight. Is the kingdom through with you? Hey, Sister Venora, God bless you. Is the kingdom through with you? Can y'all talk back to me tonight? There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. Once again, we can have this plethora of gifts that are within the body of Christ, but it is the same Holy Spirit that gives each of these gifts to all of us. Look at this. There are different kinds of service. So I don't want you to think there's only one kind of, one kind of service that you can serve here and you can serve there. There's so many different kinds. And you may have 
what? A vision of a service uh, of a ministry that I haven't even thought about, that that's not even present uh, in our church right now. And you may say, I know for a fact that's what I'm gifted to do. If that is what you are gifted to do, I want you to tell me about it. If you believe it'll bless somebody else, I want you to tell me about it. Because here's the thing. It is not I who's put that gift in you. It is not me who is expecting you to use that gift and appropriate that gift. It is God. So don't say, oh, Pastor CJ is just, you know, wow, she just wants everybody to be involved. That is not me. Look at this. This is what? The same spirit. Do you see that? I'm going put it, to put it, put it up here. There are different kinds of gifts, but it doesn't say, but the same pastor distributes them. No, it's the same spirit, big S, Holy Spirit. Do you see that? Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit that distributes them, right? There are different kinds of service. Do you see that? Not the same pastor, right? But the same Lord. So we have the Holy Spirit. We have the same Lord. Are you following this? There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. So that has that, that you don't see church in there. You don't see denomination in there. You don't see pastor in there. It is not the pastor that's distributing gifts. It is not the pastor that's expecting these works or these services from you, but it is the spirit. It is the Lord. It is God who's expecting this. Can y'all can y'all get there? Um, Sister Gertrude Fig says, um, my mind is blown. I spoke to my pastor today about additional duties, and now I'm second guessing myself. Sister Gertrude, I can promise you, it is not natural for us. It is not our natural inclination to want to do something extra. It is the Holy Spirit of God who says you have more capacity. You have more than that you can do. And so share those gifts with the kingdom. It is God who gives us these gifts. And too often we shrink back or we're frustrated by something not being done in the church. And could it be that that is your express job? That is because the reason why you're frustrated by it is because you are the one that God has assigned to it. Nobody else has even seen it. Nobody else is even bothered by it. Why? Because God has put that what unctioning in you. God has anointed you to do that particular thing. And I can tell you right now, all of us, I believe, have been multi-gifted by the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that distributes them. All I'm doing as your pastor is encouraging you what to obey the Holy Spirit, not to obey me, not to have me give you an assignment because I have a hole to fill or I have a position to fill because here's the truth. We operate best when we're in the place God has gifted us. Have you ever seen people serving in areas you know for a fact they're not gifted for it? You know for a fact God has not called them to it, and they are miserable. They are they don't they don't like it. Uh, they don't like what they're doing. And here is the truth: it's because they haven't been called to it. And what many of us make the mistake of doing is that we volunteer for things that we're capable of doing, but we're not called to it. Let me roll that through again. Just because you're able to do it, just because you can do it, just because you have the strength to do it does not mean you should do it. Oh, I know that's exactly the opposite of what church has taught us all of these years. They said, whatever you can find your hands to do, do it. I'm going to tell you right now, I want us to be an on-purpose church. I want people to operate in the giftings where God has called them, where they can cheerfully give their gift. 
not grudgingly or out of necessity. That means that a uh, pastor needed somebody to do that particular thing and couldn't find anybody to do it. So she just plugged you in. I don't want us to do that. I'd rather leave that spot vacant rather than have somebody, come on now, that is operating in an area that they're not gifted for. Because I promise you, their frustration, their discontentment will rise to the top and everybody in that ministry, everybody around them will be miserable. Don't do what you're capable of doing. Do what you're called to do. And, and are we, are we, are we getting, are we getting through here? Are, are we getting through? Uh, Sister Tony says she used to draw. I want you to see that Adam and Eve had sinned. They had this obeyed God, and now they were uncovered. Are you with me? Now, I want you to see this. I want you to see this. It's not going to be in our chat, but um, Nicole uh, put it. Nicole is our social media um, uh, director. And so let's see where that is. Let's see where that is. Uh, okay, so we're going to Genesis 3. You guys follow me there. Genesis 3. Uh, and we're going to start at 6. Genesis 3, and we're going to start at verse 6. All right. Let's start there. It says, when the man saw, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they realized they were naked. Well, take a look at this. They have been naked all of the time. All of the time they had been naked, but now their perspective of their nakedness was now perverted. They had been naked and ashamed the whole time. And now because of disobedience, they now view their nakedness as negative. Watch this now. They realized they were naked, so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. We cannot cover ourselves. Can I just go there for a moment and be real super spiritual? The only covering that we can have that can actually protect us is the covering God gives us. Let's go to eight. Let's go to Genesis three and eight. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? I think that's a good question tonight. Uh, to think that we can hide from God, uh, we cannot, but God will ask us these introspective questions, these rhetorical questions. Uh, God was not confused about where uh, Adam and Eve were, uh, but it's like, where are you? What are you doing? How did you get here? Watch this. And this is what Adam answers. The man answers. He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid, Sister Tony, my gift. I hid because I decided. I decided I wasn't any good. I decided that my drawings weren't all that good. So I stopped and God asked the man, who told you you were naked? Who told you you were too old? Who told you it was too late? Who am I talking to on online tonight? Who am I talking to uh, who decided among themselves you didn't consult the Holy Spirit? right? You love art for a reason, Sister Tony, uh, that spirit of drawing. And you may not be Picasso. You may not be Monet, but who says that that which you draw won't bless somebody else? Maybe we need to have a triplet uh, on our uh, walls. And the, because, heck, we can't get a Picasso. We can't, we can't get a Monet. Are, are, are y'all with me here? And so uh, I want us to, one, take the limits off. That's what I said earlier uh, in our broadcast. Take the limits off. Go back to doing what you enjoy doing, because guess what? God puts that joy 
back in you. You may say, oh, no, I put that away. Uh, you know, that that's something I used to do. Uh, but yeah, I'm yeah, I'm not. I'm not fooling with that anymore. Who, who am I talking to? Oh, where are you? Right. Uh, but the truth is. Wow. Where? Where? Where where are you right now? Where are you right now? I want you to be able to see what God is truly asking. Can you answer that question? Where are you right now? What do you how would you answer that? How would you answer that in this moment? Because once Satan convinces us that we are not where we're supposed to be, that's what he did with Adam and Eve. He says, oh, no, you can eat of any tree. We knew the directions that God had given. He says, you can eat from every tree. You can do anything here, but that which I've told you, you cannot do. Right? And they did just the opposite. So who else tonight? Who else tonight is on the line and you are thinking that you're not good at that? Or nobody else will appreciate it. Well, you know who is the one who is supposed to put the stamp on whether something is good or not? It's God. Can I take you back uh, to Genesis again? Can I take you back to Genesis? God has created and he pronounces it himself. It is Good. If we go to Genesis 1 and then we go to Genesis 9 and God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so God called the dry ground land and he gathered waters and he called seas and he saw that it was good. Are y'all with me? Listen. Genesis 1, I, I'm just going through with how God assesses things. Then God says, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. I want to challenge somebody tonight to look at yourself. Look at your giftedness. Please hear me and see that that which God has created in you, that which God has put in you, is good. Come on. Sister Rita, you are one of the most creative, most articulate people I know. And to say you're too old, as long as you have breath in your body, I want you to know God still has use for you. I sent uh, a note to a good friend of mine today uh, and said to her, uh, if you still have a pulse, God still has a plan. So in other words, if you're still, if you're still breathing, if you still have blood running warm in your veins, look at this. When God says, I know the plans that I have for you, watch this. He who's begun a good work in you is able to keep it and complete it. Who are you to give up on that which God is still working with? Come on now, that's like quitting before the day is done. That's like quitting at lunchtime. And who am I talking to? So the fact that you've already thrown in the towel uh, says more about what you and not about God says more about me uh, than about God. All right. Come on now. I, I need to I need to see 
I need to see some responses. So, and, and, and so, Sister Kathy, what are you too old to do? Name it. Name it. Put it out there. Name it. What are you too old to do? What have you declared? And who told you you were too old? I'm, I'm still trying to get to the, to the question that God asked Adam. Who told you you were naked? Man, you've been naked all this time. And you didn't think anything was wrong with it. And you come along with someone who didn't even create you, with someone who didn't even wake you up this morning, with someone who didn't even breathe the breath of life into you, and you're going to let them inform your faith. You're going to let them inform your future. You're going to let them inform your purpose. You're going to let, come on now, who are we allowing to speak Come on, into our lives. And maybe it's the person in the mirror. Maybe it's the person in the mirror who's doing most of the discouragement. It's not external at all. It's internal. Who am I talking to? Keisha Parks, you're online. Who am I talking to? You had dreams and you're letting what? The dreams what? Die within you. Come on. Come on. Talk to me. Come on. Hey, Betty Jackson. Come on. Come on. Come on. Sister Rita, tell me, what do you think you're too old for? Because evidently you have something in your mind when you say too old, too old for what? I could say that about me. I'm no longer 20. I'm no longer 30. I'm no longer 40. I had benchmarks for all of those ages. Some I hit, some I did not. But guess what? God still wakes me up every morning. And I said, okay, you've given me another day. What am I supposed to do with this day? Come on, talk to me. Talk to me. I'm awake. Talk to me. Don't you know it's insulting to God? I said this uh, on a few weeks ago when I said it on a few Sundays ago. If you give somebody a gift and six months later you go over to that house and that gift is still in the same condition that it was when you handed it to them. It's still, you know, wrapped up, still has the bow. Doesn't even look as if the person uh, bothered to even look inside. Uh, come on now. Uh, and you're and you're mad and you're insulted for because how dare you uh, not um, uh, open this gift that I've given you? I believe God feels the same way. All right, I'm looking at messages here. All right, so Lakeisha says she once had the passion to bake. All right, so here's my question, Sister Lakeisha. Uh, at what point did you lose your passion? What happened? Who told you you were no longer passionate about baking? What happened? Man, I wish we were in person tonight. So Sister Kathy Johnson says, after you get a certain age, that's the way you feel. Um, that's the way who feels? That's the way you feel? Because has the Holy Spirit, and I know I'm going to push this tonight, has the Holy Spirit given you those feelings? Because once again, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but... The spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. All right, Brother Robert says, letting negativity take control. Hey, Donald Morgan, God bless you. So I, I'm asking tonight, if we're saying we're too something, or it's too something, it's too late, or it's too soon, or we don't have enough money, or, you know, we don't have the right connections, you can't get a bigger connection than God. You can't get a bigger connection than the Holy Spirit. And so I'm asking tonight. So 
All right. So, Sister Lakeisha, we have three Sundays uh, left in our fifth uh, year anniversary. Uh, wouldn't it be great uh, for you to bake something wonderful uh, for each of those Sundays? I'm going to challenge you. Bake something for each of those Sundays. Because could it be uh, that that which people have started during the pandemic, people started all kinds of businesses during the pandemic when, when supposedly businesses were supposed to be shut down. But people rediscovered their passions. Why? Because they had enough time to reflect and think, you know what? I really don't like that job that I'm on. But this is what I really like doing. And so they had enough time to really delve into that which really drove their passion, that which their spirit, what, could really get into. And I'm saying, how many of us? How many of us are sitting right there? Yeah. So it's Tony, great question. What gift are you not pursuing and using and why? I allow circumstances and situations to deter me. So, Sister Lakeisha, we're going to remove, watch this now, every obstacle. What do you need to bake three items for the next three weeks, beginning this Sunday? We, we, we have our babies that are being uh, blessed uh, this weekend. Uh, what, what could you bake? Cupcakes. Uh, cookies, special. I, I don't know what it is you make. I don't know what your specialty is. Uh, somebody gave me some inclination, gave me some indications that, that you really have, you know, this kind of specialty, uh, kind of cheesecake. I'm not sure where I got that from, but, but come on now. So it's Lakeisha, what do you need? Is it, is it baking stuff? You know, if we gave you what, $250, what would you bake? Come on. Yep, I'm, I'm putting you on the spot. Absolutely. Because you guys, here's the truth. Why get mad when you see somebody else operating in your dream and God gave it to you first? Or God gave you that same kind of thing also. Can, can we go back uh, to 1 Corinthians for just a moment? I want you to see this. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians for just a moment. I, I want you to see what Scripture says. Let's go back to it for just a moment, because I think you're going to find this fascinating. Look at this. Let me go here. What is that? Number four. I want to go back to number four. It says there are different kinds of gifts, right? But the same Spirit distributes them. So now, Sister Lakeisha, let me talk to you. Sister Tony, let me talk to you. Sister Kathy, let me talk to you. Sister Rita, let me talk to you. Hear this. Now, God can give everybody a particular gift. And guess what? They will appropriate that gift differently. You ever seen musicians? Just take our own musicians. They all have a different style. They all have different substance. They all have a different personality, but they're all gifted in the area of music. We take our worship singers. Each one of them, right, has the gift of singing, but they don't each sound alike. But you blend those voices together, and oh my goodness, what a wonderful sound they produce. Why? Because each one of them is operating in the gift God gave them, and when they put it together, God creates what? That which pleases him. Am I talking to anybody? Hey, Sister Sheila. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody is operating in their gift. So God could give everybody the gift of musicianship. But each of those gifts will be manifested in a different way. Why? Because God is in charge of how that gift is manifested. We have all these preachers in the world. Not one of them sounds alike. It's insulting to God for us to try to copy somebody else. And so we have a preacher at St. John Northwest, and we have a preacher at other churches and at other churches, and everybody, what, gets 
what God deposited in that particular preacher. Right? So, so Keisha says, I am not used the gift of being technology savvy. I discounted myself from the IT industry because I didn't have the credentials to pursue it. But starting October 3rd, I will be starting a 10-week immersive cybersecurity training course in Dallas. Uh, Sister, Sister, Sister Keisha, can I tell you uh, how much uh, IT technology uh, the church you belong to uh, needs? See, see, this is what I'm saying. We, we allow Satan to talk us out of what these gifts, and then when we get a certain age, uh, we allow Satan to talk us out of it because we're too old. So at first we say, well, I don't have the credentials. So Satan uses that. Then we say we're too old, right? We have the opportunity to get the credentials. Listen, listen, Sister Keisha, it's never too late. And one of the things I'm telling you that insults God the most is that we put our gifts on the shelf and we never use them. So, Sister Lakeisha, I'm still saying I got $250 burning in my pocket. I want to know uh, how much flour do you need? How much sugar do you need? Uh, how many eggs do you need? How much milk do you need? How much vanilla flavoring do you need? How much I, I'm going to run out in a minute because I don't I don't I don't bake. But, but come on, let's stop making excuses about our giftings. And because you won't find it in a gift test, so probably, here's the truth, you're not going to find baking on a spiritual gift test. Because those who create these tests uh, don't take everything into consideration. And many mistakenly, come on now, many mistakenly think, right, that those aren't spiritual gifts, but they are. That distribution that Jesus did with those two fish and five loaves, you better believe feeding people is a spiritual gift. Jesus making water into wine at a wedding when they had run out, come on now, of wine, trust me, come on. Helping people to celebrate and make merry is a spiritual gift. People who have the gift of decoration, interior design. You guys, all of those are gifts because guess what? When you're able to create like our God created, as we see in Genesis, to be able to put flowers together and to be able to make designs and all, you guys, that is a gift from God. That's just not something we wake up with. If that were the case, everybody would be able to do it. Are y'all? Come on, hear me now. Hear me. Hear me. Yeah. Yeah. Who told you? You were naked. Chances are you did. Who told you? You couldn't do it. Chances are you did. Are, are you are you there? I want to read this part uh, to you, 12, 14, and then we're going to wrap up our time together. Um, let me go to 12. Let me go to 12. I think that'll be great. Let me go to 12. It says, just as a body, and I love how scripture uh, gives us this analogy, this parallel uh, with spiritual gifts and the body. It says, just as a body, though one has many parts, but all of its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. I'm going somewhere with this. For we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Watch this. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. That's just that foot's opinion. Regrettably, listen, 
And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. Why? Because God made, what? The ear a part of the body, but a different function. So just because we're not ears does not mean that our parts are not important. Am I talking to anybody here? And so Sister Rita says, suppose uh, your gift is in a broad area. How do you find out where you fit? Sister Rita, start working on something. See, we'll, we'll just sit all day and because we don't have specifics and we don't have details, then we get the paralysis of analysis. We'll analyze it all day, sit there and do nothing and another day has passed by. If you have one inkling of something to do, do that. I know. I'm just removing all these little excuses uh, out of the way. Tracy Dalco, you need to come on back in person. Not sure what all you're doing, but we have a safe environment. Come on back in the church. The Lord has given you the ability to speak and all of that. And you're just, you're just hanging out online. I'm calling it all out tonight. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? Do you see uh, what the Pauline writer is expressing to us? It's like, come on now, if everybody were doing the same thing, we would be in a deficit. If everybody were an eye, then we wouldn't be able to smell because we need a nose. Come on. In the, are y'all with me? Look at this. Let me look at 18. Let me look at 18 and wrap up. It says, but in fact, God has placed what? The parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. So do y'all think that the heart and the lungs are fighting against each other? No, they work in concert with one another. Come on, do you think the liver is fighting with the gallbladder. No, they work in concert with one another. Are, are y'all with me? Do you think the stomach is in competition? Come on, with the spleen? Absolutely not. All of these parts work together. And guess what? When one part is removed, when people have accidents and they say, oh yeah, we just took out the spleen and you may think, well, the spleen must not be that important then if you could just take it out and live without it. Not so. That just means all of the other parts, come on, have to take on the duties of the spleen and work twice as hard. Okay, pastor's about to say something. When you're missing, when you're out of place, when you've taken yourself out of the equation, guess what? It's not that your job doesn't need to be done. It's not that your job was unimportant. It just means all the other parts of the body have to do double duty. Come on now to replace your missing piece. Y'all not with me here? Don't you think for a moment that the spleen is not important? That's what we always hear on TV shows that somebody, you know, was in an accident and they took out the spleen. Guess what? The spleen had a job. If God put the spleen there, the spleen had a purpose. Look it up when we get offline tonight. The spleen had a purpose. It just means that everything else around the spleen that was connected to the spleen has to do the spleen's job. So it is in the kingdom. Oh my God, teach Holy Ghost. So it is when you're missing, when you're out of place, when you're not operating in your giftedness. There are others who have to pick up the slack or that job goes undone. Are you with me here? Come on. Come on. Let's 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 put away 
Let's put away all of these excuses. Let, let's put away uh, the age. Let's put away the whole credentials. Let's put away, oh, I don't do it or, or say it or sing it or bake it uh, or serve like somebody else. Let's put all of that away. Those are nothing but satanic excuses. Because God says what I put in you was good. What I put in you, come on now, was useful. And I've begun a good work in you. Don't quit on me. Don't quit on me. You're important to me. I need you in place. And we will convince ourselves, allow Satan to convince our, to convince us that, oh God, you know, they don't need me. Yes, we do. But we have to keep moving if you're not there. And I'm saying, come on back in. Come on back in. You know the reason why they do heart transplants? Come on, teach Holy Ghost. The reason why they do heart transplants is because the body cannot function without the heart. Right? We have two lungs. Right? And if we lose one, we can operate with one lung. But we can't operate optimally. Is anybody listening here? So quit thinking, well, you know, uh, they got two singers, so they don't need me. No, we need you because we want to operate optimally in the kingdom. Is anybody listening tonight to the Holy Spirit? Everybody is important. All gifts are important to the body of Christ. And no ear and no eye and no foot can say, I'm not needed because I don't operate like everything else. Y'all, the pastor is not the end-all, be-all. I'm just merely the quarterback of how things run in the church and all that. But I can promise you, church would not be the same if it were just me. I guarantee you. I know y'all say y'all love me, all that kind of stuff. I love y'all too, but I tell you this. There's so much more to the kingdom than just being a pastor. We need all hands on deck. And I'm hoping in my heart of hearts that you are hearing the Holy Spirit tonight. Don't wear out the other parts of the body because we've got to take on your part. God has created us to be an amazing church has put us within an amazing community with challenges. But I think that's what we've been called to do is to take on challenges, is to be able to be a light in a dark place. There are days When I've said, God, we're too small to do what you're showing me. We don't have enough people to do all that you're showing. And God said, if you'll take what I've given you and trust me to make up the difference, You'll be able to do all that I've called you to do and disciple others so that when you're no longer on the scene, this work will continue. Because here's the truth. It's not all up to me. It is not. I believe God has sent me to build up others so that whether I'm with you or not, the work continues because the work can't be about me. The work has to be about God. The work has to be about the kingdom. So no one person is so important. Yeah. Okay. Everybody, every part, because it's been given by the Spirit, has been sanctioned by the Lord. 
Y'all, we don't just gather to come to church on Sundays. There are children that need that. And God is saying, I'm not just counting on all of you. Disciple my people. Help them discover their passions. And I promise you, the community that I've placed you in will never, ever be the same. I'm just saying, y'all, It's the vision is big. And I've said many days, you've got the wrong one. You should have called me when I was younger. Sister Kathy, Sister Rita, I hear you. And I'm not, I'm not as old as you guys. So you don't have to be 70-something and 80-something to say you're too old. I promise you. I said, oh, God, you should have called me to do this in my 30s. And I hear God saying, but yeah, you didn't have the temperament that you have now. You didn't have the wisdom at 30 that you have now. You don't have the patience. Uh, you didn't have the patience at 30 that you have now. So I called you when you had everything I needed in you to do this work. And so I'm just saying, y'all, come on. Let's do the work God has called us to do. God doesn't need a whole lot of people. Remember Gideon? Gideon brought to the party, I think 32,000 or 30,000 people. And God said, I'm going to dwindle that down to 300. And Gideon thought, it ain't no way we can defeat the Midianites with just 300 people. God, do you see how many people they have? God says, but I'm your secret weapon. <laughs> I'm your majority. Are y'all Are y'all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you tonight? Don't let your dreams go to the grave with you. Exploit every last one of them. Exploit every gift that God has put on the inside of you. Your gift doesn't have to look like anybody else's. But trust me, if God gave it to you, God intends to use it. Listen, I know we're over time. And y'all pardon me. But I just, uh, I believe in my heart of hearts. Uh, that uh, in this fifth year, uh, this year of grace, uh, God is going to allow us to realize some things that uh, he's been showing, and I want to share them with you. And I, we're going to need all the gifts that you have uh, in order to accomplish it. It's not, it's not by one person alone, I, I, I promise you. Not by power. And not by might. Nicole put that in the chat. But by my spirit, says the Lord. What giants. I'm reminded of that. That was our battle cry. And it's, it's been in my spirit since uh, Pastor Mia came and uh, preached that Numbers 13 text. Uh, what giants. In fact, one of the worship team members said, can we get some of those shirts again? Uh, I said, we'll have to look into it. Uh, but I, I think we need to revive that because I think this is the season that we need to put to rest all of our fears and we need to put to rest all of our doubts that God has called us, that God has placed in us something special. All right. All right. I hope that you will uh, take uh, the spiritual gifts test. Let me let me put it on the screen again. Once again, this is not the end all be all. It is uh, just a survey. Actually, once again, it doesn't include the arts. It doesn't include poetry uh, and music and singing and, you know, drawing and all of that. Doesn't include architecture and all that. Trust me, all of those are spiritual gifts, writing plays and uh, producing movies, you guys, all of that, those things that move people to action. Oh my goodness. Uh, please, uh, it, this is not exhaustive. That's, that's what I want to say. This is not exhaustive, but it does give us a uh, kind of a jump off point. Okay. So will you take it, uh, and, and, and after you've taken it, print it out, uh, look it over, and then I want us to get together uh, after all of our anniversary celebrations are over. I want us to have a wonderful few Saturdays together as we talk about 
uh, how we get to appropriate, exercise, exploit our spiritual gifts. Amen. 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 God bless you, Sister Tracy. God bless you. Uh, give me your prayer request next week, you guys. Um, I'll tell you more about it Sunday. Talk about opportunity that I think is way too big for me. Uh, I'm going to be preaching at an African-American uh, preaching conference at the Truett Seminary at Baylor University on next Wednesday morning. Need you guys praying for me because they've got, yeah, every big name in the world. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Uh, and then they have Connie Jackson. All right, so I need y'all praying uh, that I will allow the Lord, one, to prepare me uh, and then use me in that moment. Why am I telling you this? I'm not sure if I will have uh, the um, internet capability to broadcast next Wednesday, but we're going to see. I'm going to be working with Brother Jimmy, and we're going to see if we cannot uh, make that happen, all right? If not, I may record something, and that way you'll be able to have a fresh Bible study. We're going to be we're going to keep talking about these spiritual gifts. We've got, got to get that which God has deposited in you out of you. Amen. 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 We are praying for Sister DeCarla Spearman, um, uh, who is still, I believe, uh, in the hospital. So be in prayer for her. Amen. Amen. Uh, praying for Ron Taylor and Sonora Barahona. Um, okay, Sister Tony, thank you. Thank you. The whole Johnson family, amen, and her construction zone family. Thank you, Sister uh, Kathy. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, Sister Shannara, good to see you, dear. Amen. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. All right. Who else? Sister Janice Arganon, thank you. Sister La Cubana said that she is back. I believe I saw her in the chat on Sunday, so great. Uh, to uh, have um, have her back. Uh, praying for Sheila Taylor had uh, sudden medical issues have arisen. All right, we're praying for you. Uh, praying for Nicole Azan, studying for her financial licensure. You got this girl, but study, 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 study. Amen, study. And then let us know. Um, what the Lord does through that. Amen. All right. Keisha Parks asking for prayers for herself. She's leaving her employment uh, to pursue cybersecurity career and gain successful employment. Amen. Amen. Mr. Keisha, uh, use, use what savings you have wisely. I believe you said it's 10 weeks. So I hope you've saved up in preparation. Once again, when God shows us a vision God also gives us provision, but we have to prepare for that which God has planned. Are, are y'all with me? We have to prepare for that which God has planned. God is not a willy-nilly God. God does not do things on the fly. God is very what? Intentional. All right? All right, so we're praying for you, uh, Sister Keisha, praying for you. Amen. Prayers for Sister Lakeisha and her family. Amen. 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 Need some help? Let us know. Praying for Faye Washington. Amen. Trying to catch all, all of the prayer requests. All right. Praying, uh, Sister Cynthia, uh, for her grandson, Joshua Hearn. Pray for me. Thank you and my family. Amen. Praying for all families. Amen. 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 Praying for Sister Marceline. Uh, she is traveling, I believe, this week. Uh, so be in prayer. Be in prayer for her. Let's see. Who else? Praying for Karen. Hey, Karen Williams in Seattle, Washington. God bless you. Great to have you with us tonight. Amen. Amen. All right. All right, family, let's pray. Listen, uh, come back. Uh, this is going to be archived, of course, on uh, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, if you want to uh, look at it again, be blessed by it again, ponder it again, and share it with somebody. Uh, just say, hey, you know what? My pastor was on, our church was on, and we believe uh, this Bible study will bless you. Amen? Uh, so don't keep it, don't keep it to yourself. 
Amen. All right. Let us let us pray. Let me just check one more time. See if there are any any others. Amen. Praying for Brandon Taylor and his family. Amen. All right, family. If you came in late, uh, wait until a few minutes after we go off. It will populate and you'll be able to watch the entire uh, study uh, from beginning to end. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, how we love you and thank you uh, and honor you uh, for this time, this time of study in your word. God, thank you uh, for being present with us. Thank you, God, for illuminating for us, God, how important we are in the scheme of things, oh God. Thank you for leaving the record of your word, oh God, that just spells it out so plainly that every part of the body, the human body, and every part of the spiritual body, Christ's body, oh God, is important. You created us that way, oh God. You intended, oh God, to put every part, every person, oh God, in place just as it pleases you. Even if it puzzles us, oh God, it pleases you. And so we thank you, God, for those who were on. We thank you for those who will watch this later. We hope and pray, oh God, that they'll be able to hear clearly the Spirit speaking to them, oh God, about their situation, oh God. So we honor you. And we love you. Thank you, oh God, for these prayer requests that have come in. God, you knew them before people even typed them in. God, there are even some prayer requests that were not uttered. And God, we know that you search, oh God, the deeper things of the heart. God, we're praying for successful test taking for financial licensure. We're praying, oh God, for a great 10 weeks of cybersecurity training. And then, oh God, cybersecurity employment, oh God. And so, God, we know that you're able to do it for all of those, oh God, who are praying for those who are sick, oh God, who are in hospitals, oh God. God, you're still a healing God. And so would you be Jehovah Rapha right now for everyone, oh God, who's suffering with chronic illnesses, oh God, who's suffering with sudden, oh God, medical issues that have come up. We just thank you, God, and we love you. Thank you, God, for the St. John Northwest Church the construction zone. Thank you, God, for giving us five amazing years. And God, as I said before, it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But God, let us keep trusting you. Let us keep looking toward you. And God, if you don't give us details, at least give us discernment, oh God. Discerning, oh God, one step at a time, one piece at a time. And we give you praise and we give you glory. And we give you honor. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. And the people of God said, amen. Amen. Listen, family, God bless you. Uh, join us on Friday morning. Amen. For corporate prayer. Uh, going to be praying, oh God, for our next three weeks. For God to bless us. You don't want to miss these next three weeks. We're blessing our babies. Amen. Who've been born during the pandemic, right before the pandemic. I think it's going to be a great day. Blessing the next generation. Amen. And then the next Sunday, uh, we're going to be doing some licensing and consecrating. Uh, and then our next Sunday, where we'll celebrate our actual anniversary and praising God for that which God has done. So would you just continue? Oh, do this for me. Do this for me. Um, really quickly, please stay on the line. I want you to send in. I want you to make a video. And just talk about your construction zone experience. Uh, whether you uh, watch us only online, whether you're in Detroit or New York or Seattle, if you've been blessed by any part of these five years, uh, we want to archive uh, your video. Now, for those of you who are coming in person, I've asked Brother Jimmy uh, to set up. Uh, uh, a camera uh, there by our uh, fifth year, uh, step and repeat our sign there in the front for you, and you can do yours in real time, all right? So we want everybody to send a message, talk about your experience, um, 
you know, two minutes, three minutes. Uh, you started with us. We want to hear about that. Amen. If you just came on board, we want to hear about that. We think within five years, uh, there's a story to tell. And so we'd love to know how you came to know about us, uh, the Sunday you joined, any of that kind of thing. Something that's special that's happened, friends you've made. Amen. Uh, the difference uh, that being a part of our church has made or being a part affiliated with us. Amen has made. So Lanita Weir, we want to hear uh, your story. Of course, we know how we're connected, but just love to hear from all of our folks. So if you're, if you're out of state, please send the video. Uh, we're going to be putting that out. Uh, we'll put that out for the next few weeks where you can send your video. Of course, if you're here in town, uh, all you have to do is come to church and we're going to be filming after each Sunday. Uh, after worship for, you know, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes, as many people as we can, uh, telling, telling their St. John Northwest story. Amen. I'm going to look so, so far to that because I know there's so many things out there that I have no clue about, but would love, love, love to hear about it. All right. Okay. Hey, we're signing off. God bless you. Once again, join us Friday morning for corporate prayer and then join us Sunday morning as we bless the next generation. Love you so much. Take care. See you soon. We just got, we just got to keep on dreaming. We don't need to put aside that feeling, no. We just can't deny Life has been kind of crazy But now it's time to get up Get up Get up now Tell me Oh yeah Everything you're thinking I'll listen Whatever you're afraid of Don't you wanna? Oh, we better.